Hello friends, this video on periodic classification of elements part 10 is brought to you by examplay.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 9. There are some merits of modern periodic table. The first thing is, it is based on atomic number. The second thing is, it explains the reason for periodicity of the elements. It explains the reasons. The third thing is, there is no anomaly in the arrangement as we have seen in the earlier periodic tables and the newly discovered elements could easily be accommodated in this. Also, it helps understand why elements in a group have similar properties. For example, you see that all these elements in the groups we had had similar properties, right? So this guy helps understand why this is happening, right? Why they have same uh, properties, why they are all metals or why they are all non-metals, such kind of stuff. There are some advantages of modern relativity too. First is it made the life of chemists and the chemistry students like you easy because just by looking at the location or position of the element in the periodic table you can guess a lot of things about the element. It is easy to remember properties of elements based on its position in the periodic table. There is a relation between the chemical bonding in the periodic table also. So observe that the left side element combines with the right side element and they form ionic bond. For example, NaCl. This is on the left, this is on the right. Why? Because this guy is generally metal and this guy is generally non-metal. This guy wants to give electron and this guy wants to take electron. So there is a transfer of electron happens between these and they form ionic bond. But the element on the right side combines with the element of right side to form covalent bond. For example, CO2. Why? Because both on the right, both want electron. Both are electron hungry. Both are electron. Nobody is free to give electron. Right? So in, in this case, when nobody is ready to give electron, they share electron and they form coal. And generally, the element on the left, they don't combine the element on the left. So left and left they don't combine. So this is the kind of uh, observation we got from periodic table. Left combines with right to form ionic bond, right with right to form covalent, and left doesn't combine with left. Now at the question time. How could the modern periodic table remove various anomalies of Mendeleev periodic table? See, first thing was Mendeleev periodic table was unable to give hydrogen a place. So this was cleared by my our modern periodic table. Then isotopes was confusing in um, Mendeleev. There was no space for isotopes. This doubt was cleared again by modern periodic table. Right, and atomic number was given preference over atomic mass, and with this, the cobalt nickel thing where the elements were arranged not based on the increasing atomic mass but they are based on increasing atomic number, those issues were resolved right by atomic number using atomic number as the base. These issues were resolved. Name two elements which you expect to show similar property as magnesium. And I have this magnesium, where is my magnesium? This guy is magnesium. So I know that elements in the group will have similar property. So I can pick any of this element. I can pick this uh, calcium, this guy is strontium. These two elements will have same chemical property because all these have are part of same groups and they have a valency of two. Right? They have valency of two, yeah. So they will have same chemical property because I know that if you take any group, they'll have similar chemical property. Name three elements which has single electron in the outermost cell. Right? Single electron is this guy. All these guys will have single electron. So I can take any of this element, lithium, sodium, potassium. So I can write here lithium, sodium, potassium. All these elements will have single element in the outermost cell. Two elements that have two electrons in the outermost cell. So these guys have two electrons. So I asked for two. I can say magnesium, calcium. Three elements filled with outermost electron. So I know that my these elements, the last one, are filled with uh, my outermost electrons. So I can name these guys helium, neon, argon, krypton. They are all my elements whose uh, outermost cells are filled. Very easy. If you have Periodic table in front of you, you can answer to all these questions in a fraction of seconds. 
lithium sodium potassium all metals they react for it to liberate hydrogen is any similarity in these elements so let's see lithium sodium potassium yes they have similarity right they all group on elements and they have a valence electron of one they have one valence electron so that is the similarity right helium is a unreactive gas and neon is a extremely low reactive gas so let's see helium and neon what if anything to do with their atom having common? Yes, they do have common, right? What is the common? Common is that they have filled outermost shell. Please note, you can't say they have uh, uh, eight or two because this guy has two elements in outermost shell, this guy has eight, but they all filled because for this guy, this is K shell and K set, there is only two electrons to get filled. So you can say that they have filled outermost shell. In modern periodic table, which are the metals among top 10 first elements? So top 10 first element, let's see the metal. Hydrogen is not metal, helium is not metal. Lithium, beryllium is metal. And uh, that's all. Because I'm talking about top 10, they are the only two metals. And then we all are metals, right? So I'll say lithium and beryllium are the only two metals in the first 10 elements in that. See, if you have later in front of you, you can answer all the questions very easily. But if you don't have periodic table in front of you, it's very difficult to answer this question. So, a lot of students memorize this periodic table and that's advisable for chemistry students to memorize at least till 30 or 40 elements. By considering their position in the periodic table, which of the following elements would you expect have maximum metallic character? So, I have GA, GE, I have GA, I have GE, AS, SE. B. What is B? It's B R actually. B R. B R. So if you see, we know that the non-metallic character increases as we go from here to here, right? We explained that. So this guy will be the maximum non-metallic. Why? Because the non-metallic character increases as we go from left to right in the periodic table. And we've explained that. Which of the following is not a correct statement about the trend from left to right? The elements become less metallic in nature. That's correct because the metallic character is decreasing. The number of valence electrons increases. That's also correct. This guy is one, this guy is two, three, four electrons. Correct. The atom lose their electrons more easily. Uh, this guy is incorrect because this guy is more reactive, right? And this guy is less reactive because it has to lose only one electron. This guy has to lose two electrons. So this is incorrect. The oxide, the oxide become more acidic here. This is also correct. So this, this guy is incorrect. This is my answer. Element X forms chloride with the formula XCl2, which is a solid and a high melting point. X would most likely be the same group as. See, since X forms XCl2, if you see Na, Na forms NaCl, Mg forms MgCl2, Al form AlCl3, right? And Si form SiCl4. With this, I can say that MgCl2 is almost similar to XCl2. So I can say that this X is part of Mg. Sounds good? If I've got XCl2 and MgCl2, both the chlorides formalized match. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.